Welcome, good afternoon, good morning, good evening and good night wherever you are and whatever time you're listening to this recording. Today is International Migration Day and I thought I should share a message with everyone who is for some reason or another living far away from home. My name is Dr. Molin Mogisha. I am the founder of the African Cultural Promotion Center and I find it very important to share this message myself because I am also a migrant and uh, being a migrant is uh, a unique situation. It's also has been important that it gets recognition in today, the World Migrant Day. 18th December of every year is the International Migrant Day. So let's see, who is a migrant? A migrant is defined in the dictionary as anybody who leaves home, moves to another place, to live in another place, normally, not always, because they are looking for better conditions or work opportunities. Um, migration is not a new thing. It's not something that just uh, came up with this generation. It's something that has always been a factor of life. People migrate from one place to another. People move from one place to another. And um, we are, we were used to, for example, people migrating where I come from, they would migrate from one place to another because they needed to look for better pasture for their cattle. Animals migrate, birds migrate, and so it is not an unusual thing. The reason now it becomes something that you hear about all the time is because people have tended to see it as a negative thing. So migration in itself is not a negative thing. Um, I say I'm a migrant because, for example, my grandfather migrated from Kavale in Uganda, southwestern Uganda, and migrated to Mitoma in Rohinda in another district, which was Busheni. He left his family, he came with his wife and started a new life in, uh, in a different place. So my mother and my aunties were born in a different place from where my grandfather grew up. And we always had stories about Kavale. We had relatives in Kavale, we still have them. And then when I was 10, I moved to live with my father who was living in a different district. And every move, I get something new. And then we move to Kampala. I mean, this is also a kind of migration. We're moving within the same country, but you're moving in completely different regions. What makes it significant, for example, is that in Uganda, if you're in Kavale, you're speaking a different language. If you're in Busheni, you're speaking a different language. And when I was in Kasese, we lived in Kilembe, we spoke a different language. I mean, people that we live with spoke a different language. We are living among the Bakonjo. And then we came to Kampala, which is metropolitan. There's all sorts of languages and we communicate in English. And then 15 years ago, I moved from Kampala and now I live in the Netherlands. And I've lived in the Netherlands for 15 years. So I am a, mig a migrant. In my opinion, it's irrelevant the reasons why someone moves. When they have moved, they are a migrant and they will ex have different experiences. One of the experiences, for example, is cultural shock. When you move, you find you go to a different people, a different culture. For example, even within Uganda, when I started to live in Kilembe, I was just amazed by how people did things differently. We used to carry things on our head. And in Kilembe, the, the Bakonjo, we used to go up the mountains and they carry things with a bag on their back. And they go up the hill, so they have a string which is attached to a bag, and so the bag is actually on their back, but the weight is felt on the head. That was different for me, and that was new. And then they used to eat uh, fufu made from cassava, which I had never eaten. I liked it, however. So they used to, so you everywhere you go, you find different things. When I came to the Netherlands, it's a completely different environment. I came right in the middle of the winter. I had never experienced winter, so that was uh, quite an experience. And um, and 15 years later, I still, you know, learn new things every day. 
Now, when you talk about country migration, migrating from one country to another, of course it has its challenges. Now, in this video, I do not want to focus a lot on the challenges, I mention them in passing. Some of the things I like, for example, living in Holland, among other things, which is quite unusual, is I like the fact that the weather changes, the seasons change every four months. So I know it has taught me to inherently understand that nothing lasts forever. Even if it's a bad winter, it will end. Even if it's a very good summer, it will end. So I live with the season, and in this season I prepare for the next season somehow, but I enjoy this season as well, which is really the very nature of life. The two things I want to highlight when we talk about migration is um, uh, integration. Normally when you come to a country, you are required to integrate. And part of this integration, um, I think it's integration is misunderstood because you find that, for example, if I use Netherlands as an example, you have to learn the Dutch language, you have to learn the Dutch culture and the Dutch customs. That's a requirement if you are planning to stay here for a while. So what we do not really think about is that integration is a two-way process. While I learn about the Dutch culture, I expect the Dutch to also learn about parts of my culture. So what I find beautiful is that while I'm learning about their food and the way they do things, I am also sharing with them and exchanging. It's a cultural exchange. I have friends who now eat chapati and they like it. I have friends who eat um, uh, kavalagala. These are things that are very unique to Uganda, Mandazi. And you find that we're not so different. So then I meet people from different countries as well, from Nigeria, from generally West Africa, South Africa. You find that we're not as different as we would like to be. So migration has that advantage of uh, when you try to integrate, um, make it a cultural exchange, share a part of you, and they also learn a part of you. So. Generally, if you come to my house, I'll probably make you chapati, I'll make you brown nut sauce, I'll make you samosa, things that I have, you know, that are, are very, you know, common for me as a Ugandan. And then the other thing that I would like to mention about migration that uh, people tend to see as a negative thing, we tend to want to differentiate ourselves as, you know, when we're in a different place as migrants, based on how you came. So you find that some people say, I'm an expat. And some people say, I'm a, I'm a refugee. Oh, I came here because of uh, difficult conditions in my country, seeking asylum. In the end, when you're here, you're here. When you're together, you're together. When you've left your country, the challenges and difficulties are quite similar, of course. So you find that something like, um, I mean, there's a, a very negative word, for example, from my country that they use for people who come to work abroad, and they call them Cheyo. Kubacheyo is supposed is seen as a, a kind of it has a negative connotation. It literally means you know like sweeping the street or sweeping. And in a way, when I think about it, we are all kind of Kubacheyo because we come looking for better conditions. Some of us stay, others don't stay, others move on to the next journey. It's a journey. This world, we are all migrating we're all migrants so i like to believe that uh, sometimes we want to use words that are kind of differentiating and almost discriminating sometimes you find that some people say okay i'm part of the expert community but when you say part of the expert community it is somehow excluding those who have come either because of asylum or who don't have formal jobs or didn't come because of formal jobs like a differentiation between the highly skilled migrants and the people who uh, just figured out through other means to come. I would like to conclude by really highlighting the advantage, the good things that come from migration. Migration is a good thing for, for the world, for uh, an, a nation, for anyone. Cultural exchange tends to kind of reduce barriers. When you look, for example, within the, the, the within Uganda, I'll use a country that I know, within Uganda, you have people who move from the different districts and live in another district. Maybe they intermarry or maybe they're working there. When you live with the people 
and you know them more, you get to know them, you begin to appreciate them as a people. So it kind of breaks barriers and breaks ice. When I was growing up, I grew up in the southwestern Uganda, and when we had a people from uh, northern Uganda, we didn't understand them, first of all, because the language they use is difficult. So the name that is used to describe them is kind of dis kind of disrespectful in a way, like, like Bakoko, or you hear people say, oh, the northerners, or the easterners, which is, Bakoko is to almost to mean like, like they speak an animal language. But when you get to know one, different to one, in that case, for example, marry one, then you realize that actually, you know, they're just also ordinary people. When you talk about international migration, it creates a community of people who not only know where they come from, but where they are, and they understand and appreciate other cultures. Immigration uh, results in um, like children, of course, when we move, then you, you produce children who are living in different countries whose formative years have been influenced by different cultures. They call them third culture kids. So you find that third culture kids are unique and are very, very big resource for the world because they can see things from different angles. They can see things from one side to the other side. So one of the most common TCK that we all know, third culture kid, is, for example, former president of the United States, Barack Obama. After living in many places, after having uh, been raised by parents, Kenyan parents and an American mom and his grandparents, you find that his view of the world is not only skewed to one culture. So he, can, he makes a very good diplomat. TCKs make very good diplomats. They realize that there's no need to fight about certain things to misunderstand each other in certain ways because they have been on both sides. One of the experiences, for example, that I have when I was growing up is I was uh, raised first as a Protestant and then as a Catholic. Then I grew up as a Muchiga, but then grew up also then in a, a, a Minyankole family. And there is always that, you know, a rift between the two sides. You find that Catholics will speak negatively about Protestants and Protestants will speak negatively about Catholics. And sometimes Banyankole would speak maybe negatively about Bachiga. But when they do that, without realizing that I'm actually a big part of me is a Muchiga, you kind of feel like the unfairness of it because you know that the Bachiga are not bad people or the Banyankole are not bad people. So when one side talks about the other side, you know, you feel the injustice of it and you sometimes find yourself arguing for the other side. So TCKs tend to be peacemakers because they do see things from both sides and they don't normally take sides as opposed to people who have not been influenced in any way by other cultures. So I would like to conclude by saying migration is a good thing. I wish you all a happy International Migration Day. If you are living in a different country, I hope you take the full advantages of being a migrant. And um, if you're living in the Netherlands, uh, feel free to check on us at the Africa Cultural Promotion Center where we celebrate African culture where we want to bring out all the positives of being a migrant, but also bring out uh, some of the challenges so that we can solve them to soften the journey for everyone. We are all migrants. We are all in this world actually, temporarily, and we are moving on to the next world. And so let's enjoy the pleasures of where we are. I also would like to point out that it is important as a migrant not to forget where you came from, not to abandon your culture altogether, so that you are find ways to keep connected to your culture, either through books, through food, through dress. I always put on my beautiful colors. And I remember when I was um, working before, uh, we had a client who every time he came, he looked through my office and said good morning, which I liked. And then one day he told me, 
he always comes to say good morning because no matter what weather it is, what season we're in, he's always curious to see what I'm wearing because he said I was always wearing beautiful colors, bright colors, whether it was winter or summer or spring, which I did just, you know, because that's just who I am. But she said it made her morning. She always liked to pass by and see what I'm wearing. It cheered her up somehow. So sometimes the things that you do just by being you can cheer someone else up. Don't lose who you are because you have migrated. Maintain who you are. And if you're raising children, please keep them connected to their culture as well. It gives them a kind of identity so that they know where they are from and where they are going. Thank you so much. We hope to see you in uh, some of our many activities and programs at the Africa Cultural Promotion Center. Drop us an email, follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, or connect in whichever way that you find convenient. Happy International Migrant Week. Have a lovely season. It's December. It's Christmas coming. Holidays. Enjoy. And thank you for tuning in.